click right there click the channel then click in the videos tab and then scroll through the videos and watch any video you ain't seen before and make sure you like comment and subscribe if you ain't subscribed and hit the notification bell and when you do all this you was teaching youtube robot algorithms that hood horror is content that y'all love and then they'll push me more thank y'all me myself i ain't had a whole lot of like scary situations I've been in, like you know, fights and arguments and stuff like that, but not nothing where I felt like uh, I was getting chased by a killer or stalked or anything like that. In my opinion, having a stalker or dealing with a stalker, or whatever you want to, however you want to say it, is one of the scariest things because you don't know what who the person is, you don't know what they up to. And you don't know when they watching. So I could just imagine having to deal with that got to be one of the worst things you could ever have to deal with. So I always encourage y'all to send stories, man. If you got stories, you know, especially true stories and stuff, or some stuff you done been through or somebody you know been through, send it because people always want a chance to tell you know they story man tell they horrors tell they fears and all that so this story here was sent to uh sent to me from a lady older lady she and you can send your stories to hood horror creepy pasta at gmail.com once again hood horror creepy pasta at gmail.com now she sent the story and like i said she an older lady not old old but you know she got a little seasoning on her. And uh, she work a job where she come home late at night on the bus. And something, you know, she say something crazy creepy happened to her. Now, she worked at a department store and would have to close the store every night because none of the young folks wanted to be there. She said they'd be ready to get home and go smoke, drink, play video games. You know, that's in her words. Now, I don't do smoking and drinking myself, but I love some video games. <laughs> You know, let me know if y'all on Xbox. We could play some zombie killing games or something. That's mostly what I play. I don't be playing basketball like that. I'm taking a break from basketball this year. I'm tired of 2K. But anyway. So anyway, by the time she would get out of the, it will be around 10. And a bus came at 10.09. Now, she was um, on the bus and saw the same people she would see every night. And they all laughed and joked and complained about their jobs like they did every night. Now, when you work a tough job like she do, and you got to take that bus every day, you learn how to make the best out of it. You learn that it's not all bad. You can find some good in any, um, you know, situation. Because you adapt to stuff over time. It's just like in, on the show Good Times, man. Good times. <clears throat> excuse me. Good Times was called Good Times, not because they was having actual good times. Good Times was called Good Times because it was them making the, the best out of bad times. You know, it's kind of like a, uh, it's, I think it might be an oxymoron, I think. When you do something and people, because like if you was like, if you weren't from there, you never been there, you from the suburbs or something, and you'd be like, man, why is they cracking jokes and smiling and having so much dang fun, <laughs> man? You know, why is they just turned up all the time, man? You know? But you got to be there to understand. If you ain't from there, you ain't going to understand, man. Now, so, yeah, you learn to adapt to stuff over time. And that's a gift and a curse because by adapting, you kind of just accepting that things are going to be the way they are. But that's why you always got to keep, you know, a good balance in life. Don't get too deep on either side. Stay balanced. Stay grounded. Appreciate what you get and also strive to put yourself in position to get more if you want, you know. So she got off the bus and she still had another half a mile to walk because she stayed in a rural area where everybody's house was far off from the street and back up in the woods. Now, y'all who stay in the city might not have seen this before, but in the country, it's areas where folks had these long driveways and their houses sit back up in the woods. Now, some houses, you wouldn't even know they was there if it wasn't for you seeing the mailbox on the street. Now, when she got off the bus, she was happy and smiling until she seen the man standing across the street, kind of like behind a big tree. Now, in the city, if you see somebody out at night, 
it really ain't no big deal like that. Probably just, you know, you know, just people. People be moving and grooving. All the city don't sleep, you know. But when you're in the country, it's creepy because, you know, you just can't walk to the corner store like you can when you're in the city. Like the closest gas station, like three miles away, and ain't nobody walking three miles that late at night just to go get a pop or whatever, man. So she sped up a little bit, but he crossed the street and stared, uh, started down and was staring down in her uh, direction. Now she felt that hazy feeling you feel when you get scared. You know that feeling like when you can just feel the fear making its way up to your brain or whatever. And she said she took off full speed, which she said wasn't real fast at all. <laughs> Cause she said she had a big old lunch lady booty. <laughs> So you can't move too fast with that lunch lady booty. <laughs> so they say he took off right behind her, and he was faster than her. So he was uh, got right up on her real quick, and she screamed for help. And she was moving fast as she could and hard as she could, and she was trying to get to her phone. And she ran out into the road, and the Lord must have been looking out for her because she was able to flag down a police car. Now, when the guy who was chasing her realized it was a cop car, he turned to run, but the cops was right on him. And it took them all night long, but they tracked him down. And when they told uh, the guy's name, she fell to the floor crying because it was her ex-boyfriend who she had broke up with just a few weeks earlier. Now, that was supposed to be the end of the video, but I got to add a little something on to this Look, y'all, uh, ladies, read the signs, all right? If you meet a guy and that guy give you some bad signs, some red flags, and everybody got different red flags. You know, that's one thing I realized when I came back up to Chicago is a lot of stuff that's acceptable here ain't acceptable in, in Atlanta. You know, like a lot of things guys do and say, they couldn't say that junk to no country girl. You know, the city girls, it's like here, as long as a guy don't beat you, you'll put up with whatever else just as long as he ain't beating on you. And I ain't saying every woman like that. You know, just certain places I've seen, uh, things I, I haven't seen in Atlanta. But the bottom line is when you see the red flags, get up out of there, all right? You know, get up out of there. Now, some things... If a guy, you know, lead a toilet seat up, you can fix that, you know. A guy don't uh do the dishes right or something, you know, you can fix that. You know, sometimes he get impatient with his words or something. You can fix that. But if he willing to bust your head open, or he willing to cuss you out, or he willing to just, you know, something. Look, you know, you know I ain't got to go too far into detail, but... When the bad, when the signs is there, get out before you get in too deep. 